This is Hina, the voice behind Dr. Teeth. Why smash your head in your textbook when we are here to make dentistry easy for you? So before we proceed to the video, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. And also, if you found the video helpful, don't forget to like and comment as it motivates us to create more videos of this kind. For more amazing content, don't forget to visit our website where we have MCQs, courses and much more. So let's begin. Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. I hope that you all are doing fine. In the last video, we had studied about the various triangles of the neck. And now we have an idea of what is a digastric triangle. So in this video, we are going to learn about the contents of the digastric triangle. Digastric triangle is also known as submandibular triangle. So as the name suggests, the triangle will be just below the mandible. Now here I have a side face. So this is the side of the neck. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove the layer one by one starting from the skin and we'll have a look at what all structures we are having. Okay. So first of all, this is our skin. Okay. Now when I remove that, we will have superficial fascia. And this superficial fascia, it contains the platysma muscle. And we have two nerves. So we have the cervical branch of the facial nerve. And we have the transverse or anterior cutaneous nerve of neck and to be precise we have the ascending branch of this nerve okay so this is the ascending branch okay then we have the deep fascia which splits to enclose the submandibular salivary gland okay so all these things which we have studied till now this is the roof of the digastric triangle so let us revise we have our skin then we have the superficial fascia which has the platysma and two nerves the cervical branch of the facial nerve and the ascending branch of the transverse or anterior cutaneous nerve of the neck then we have the deep fascia which splits to enclose the submandibular salivary gland now let us just quickly revise what we had learnt in the last video and that is the boundaries of the digastric triangle. So here you can see this is the front of the mandible or say anterior of the mandible and this is the posterior of the mandible. Here we have our mastoid process, mastoid process, okay. So here anterior inferiorly we have the anterior belly of digastric. So here we have the anterior belly of digastric and here we have the posterior, posterior belly of digastric. So anterior inferiorly we have the anterior belly of digastric and posterior inferiorly we have the posterior belly of digastric. Now superiorly we have the base of the mandible okay so let us suppose we have a base of the mandible and a imaginary line joining the angle of the mandible means from here till the mastoid process till the mastoid process okay so all these area it is the digastric triangle okay now let us see the contents we have in this triangle and this muscle right here this is the mylohyoid okay so it forms the floor of the mouth okay and this one right here it is the stylohyoid okay so here in the floor what muscles we are having we are having a mylohyoid muscle okay and also here we have a hyoglossus muscle okay 
okay in this region posteriorly also a part of a middle constrictive muscle is also there in the floor so in the floor we have three muscles mylohyoid okay mylohyoid anteriorly hyoglossus posteriorly and a small part of the middle constrictor muscle of the pharynx so this is all what we have in the floor coming to the contents of the anterior triangle let's have a look so this is the anterior part of the triangle here you can see superficial to the mylohyoid muscle we are having the we are having the superficial part of the submandibular salivary gland okay superficial part now what else we have we have the facial vein facial vein and what else we have we have the submandibular lymph node this in green okay so what all we have superficial to the mylohyoid muscle we have the superficial part of the submandibular salivary gland we have the facial vein and we have the submandibular lymph node now what do we have deep to this muscle means just behind this mylohyoid muscle what all we have let us see here we go now as we can see here just behind this muscle we have submental artery mylohyoid nerves and vessel so we have please don't mind my handwriting it's already quite bad and this device which i'm using to write makes it even worse sorry for that now coming to the structures which are superficial to this hyoglossus muscle so obviously we can see here we have the submandibular gland and we are not talking about the superficial part we are talking about the like the little deeper part of the submandibular gland is here also we have the stylohyoid muscle here and also intermediate tendon of the digastric is here also we have a hypoglossal nerve here okay so we have a hypoglossal nerve here now coming to the posterior part of the triangle you remember we had a mastoid process here and we were making the floor of the mouth like so right from here to here so even the things which are here will be included right so what all we have here first of all we will have a look at the superficial structures and then the deep structures so superficially we have a lower part of the parotid gland okay also we have the external carotid artery before it enters the parotid gland so what we are having and let me label this also this is the lower part of the parotid gland now some deep structures which we can find here they are between the external and the internal carotid arteries so these would be the stylogloses stylopharyngeus the pharyngeal branch of the vagus nerve and glossopharyngeal nerve so what all structures can we find here let us imagine let us suppose we have this artery this is the let us suppose this is the this is the external carotid okay and this is the internal carotid so here we have two muscles okay i'm just drawing for the sake of making it easy for you to remember this does not represent the exact you know how they would be inside so we have the stylogloses and the stylopharyngeus and we have two nerves we have the nerve 1 nerve 2 we have the the glossopharyngeal nerve and the pharyngeal branch of the vagus nerve and we have one bone and 
one gland so we have the we have the styloid process okay and we have the and we have the part of the parotid gland okay so what all we have in the deep structure in the posterior part of the triangle we have two muscles two nerves one gland one bone what are the two muscles these are the styloglossus stylopharyngeus two nerves glossopharyngeal nerve and the what pharyngeal branch of the vagus nerve and the styloid process and the parotid gland so these were the structures that were deep in the posterior part of the digastric triangle but still deeper we have three main structures and what are they these are the we have the we have this internal carotid artery right we also have internal jugular vein and we also have our very own vagus nerve so these three they are the deepest structures okay so you can imagine these three are the deepest then and superficially what we had we have this external carotid artery before it enters the parotid gland so also the also the let me just draw it here also the lower part of the parotid gland was somewhere here okay so these were the contents of the digastric triangle if you want me to cover other triangles as well do let me know in the comment section below and also let me know if you found this video helpful and it was easier for you to memorize my drawing is not that good but still i tried my level best to make it clear give you a clear picture so you can support my work by subscribing to my channel and also joining channel membership next to the subscribe button you can see that we have a join button you can join and support the channel by paying a little monthly fee this will help us create more and better content so till we meet next time take very good care of yourself allah hafiz